Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create attacks and also add modifiers to them inside of my projectile attack system. So the basic idea of how it works is you have a game object, generally a character, an enemy, or your main player, and in that game object you add a script to it, which will be a kind of a manager for that object. It could be an enemy script, it could be a player script. And then on top of that, you add attacks to that same game object, and then you reference those attacks inside of your main enemy or player script. So in order to get a quick start on that, I do have a couple sample scripts added to my uh, demo and then scripts section of the package. And you could just drag a enemy script straight onto a character, and then that would function for being able to launch attacks from. But here we'll actually go through the steps of creating a custom script and then adding attacks to it. So let's get started first by creating an attack. So add component and there are three different classes for the attack base. The first is called projectile attack base and then below that you can see the other two which are based off of projectile attack base including aimed projectile attack and direction and projectile attack. Now these two types of attacks are force based so when the projectiles launch on these they will apply a force to the rigid body which should be attached to any projectiles launched with these two the difference between these two is that a directional projectile attack will be set to go out in a specific direction in the editor where an aimed projectile attack will try to target uh, a, another game object either referenced by name or referenced by tag and aim at that game object wherever it's located within your scene. You can still use projectile attack base as well for any projectile that's not going to rely on rigid body physics. Uh, for instance if you want an animated projectile that's going to move in a very specific path then you can use a projectile attack base just to create the projectile at a specific spot and then let Unity's animation system take over that. So you can use the projectile attack base to create the projectile game object, but then rely on Unity's animator system in order to actually move it around or change the sprite on it. So for right now, because we don't have anything to aim at, we'll just create a directional projectile attack. So when you create the directional projectile attack, you have a bunch of different settings here. We'll go through each of them right now. So attack delay is the amount of time between attacks, and that assumes that you have um, basically the attack to automatically attack on these intervals whenever you create your enemy script. So the enemy script would basically activate this attack, as we'll do later on, and then every X seconds or portions of a second, it's going to launch an attack. The attack will live for a set amount of seconds, how long until that projectile fades out. The attack projectile, the type of projectile which we're creating copies of and launching at uh, players or wherever else they want them to go in the scene. And one of the most key things, the event modifiers. If you've seen my demo video uh, going through all the 20 modifiers in my system, uh, this is where you would attach them. So regardless of which modifiers you have, uh, they would all go in this list. The order would matter, I believe they all uh, trigger in order. Though if you were to look into the code, there are different uh, events that these modifiers trigger at. Uh, so they don't all activate at the same time, but if they are part of the same event, they will trigger in order. Next is the launch position. Uh, by default, this is an offset from your main game object, so XYZ coordinates. And of course, we're dealing with Unity units, so whatever one square is here for your game, that's what we're talking about there. The launch sound, so whenever a projectile is instantiated, it will play this audio clip. And if you'd rather the launch occur at a world launch position rather than the uh, offset of the game object, you can do that. So if you add world launch position here and 000, that would mean 000 coordinates within your scene rather than right on top of your game object. Now down here we can see force attack settings. Uh, as I mentioned, the aimed projectile attack and the directional projectile attack have a few different settings going on there. Launch force is the amount of force that's getting applied to the rigid body. And then right below force you can set it to launch as a force mode or impulse. 
Uh, basically look up rigid body for more details on that. Also launch rotational force which will basically make your projectile spin around. And then specific to directional projectile attack we have launch direction which is uh, basically the vector representing the direction you're going to be sending the projectile out from. So for instance if I was to put in negative one and one here then the projectile we create from this game object is going to go out in the negative x-axis and positive y-axis so in theory that should go in this direction basically so now in order for this to work at a bare minimum we need to create a projectile and we also need to either attach or create a script which can activate that projectile attack and start launching projectiles now if you look closely at attack projectile what you'll notice is that it has projectile container here. So in my package anything that has the projectile script attached to it is also a projectile container. So the reason this even exists at all is in the case that you are creating an animation controlled projectile you may need to uh, basically create a parent object and give it the projectile container script. And the reason why you would do that is so that on the child actual projectile object you can set positions in the animation window and then those positions would actually be relative in the scene rather than absolutes so that might be important when you don't know exactly where that projectile is going to appear from otherwise you wouldn't be able to have an animation play that's position related uh, that can appear anywhere in your scene that's the reason for that but not every projectile would need it just ones that are going to be doing animation that's position based so here I'm going to take one of the demo projectiles and attach it to this attack projectile field and we'll go through all the settings of that uh, projectile. So here we'll use uh, Poison Spit, why not? So these are just uh, projectiles I've taken from my game Heart Battle and use them for demo purposes here. So the game object, Poison Spit, it does contain a projectile script. So we'll attach it here and we'll take a look at the game object itself. You can see the projectile script, which as you can see is missing the collision sound. So I'll go ahead and take care of that real quick. Okay, so now the wave file is properly attached. So if it's not obvious, the collision sound is the sound it plays when the projectile game object collides with another object. And as you might expect, uh, part of this collision relies on having colliders enabled. Beyond that, uh, damage on collision, whether or not you want this projectile to actually do damage. Fade time, which all projectiles have by default. Uh, when you have the attack launch, it has an attack lifespan. So whenever that lifespan is up, if the projectile is still around, it will fade out over a set amount of time. That's just to make it look a little nicer. If you don't want that at all, you could simply set this to zero and the power of the projectile. So this is just going to be whatever value you want, you want to set the strength of the projectile to for whatever purpose it's going to do. Now depending on if you're doing a 2D or 3D game, you'll either have uh, sprite renderers or mesh renderers here. And if you want the projectile to interact with 2D physics, which is likely because um, aimed projectile attacks and uh, directional projectile attacks do apply force to rigid bodies, so in most cases you're going to want this. Uh, then there are your settings for that. Also, you may want to have certain aspects of your projectile uh, animated. In the case of, like, say, a sprite animation where it changes from frame to frame, you can do all of that here. Uh, that's not anything specific to the script set here, though. Okay, so we have a projectile. Pretty simple to set up. Uh, in general, make sure it has a rigid body 2D or a 3D and a circle collider or a box collider or whatever you have going on, and the projectile script itself. So now in order to make this work, we need a script which is going to take this directional projectile attack and actually enable it. So uh, once again, you can use my enemy script, which is in the demo folder, if you want a head start on that to just get an idea of uh, how you could launch it. But uh, here we'll just go ahead and write a really basic script to make it go ahead and start attacking. So we're going to start a new C sharp script and I will call it make character attack very creative name for a script sure and we will open that up in visual studio okay so now in one way or another you're going to need to get reference to that attack which is presumably attached to your enemy or your character 
So here I'm going to uh, declare a public projectile attack base uh, attack. You could also have a list of attacks as I did in my enemy script. And this will just be so that we can drag that component and assign it here. So let's actually go ahead and do that. Okay, so we have the attack field there. I'm going to drag this directional projectile attack in there uh, so that we can reference it inside of the script. Seems to be working fine. Uh, just in most cases, make sure that you are using the projectile attack base script so that all types of attacks can work there. That is the base class for it. So now what I guess we'll do is when this script starts up, or basically the character is active inside of the scene, we're going to take this attack and the method we're going to want to run here is periodic attack. You can see it's an I enumerator, which means it needs to be started as a coroutine. Uh, there's also currently start single launch, which could be used for launching one projectile uh, rather than having it repeat every X seconds. Uh, an alternative to that would actually be to use the limited ammo modifier, which I added. But in most cases, periodic attack here is what you're going to want to use. So periodic attack. Of course, you want the parentheses to call it as a method. And we're going to do start coroutine, as you would in any mono behavior script, and attack.periodic attack, which means with the settings that we have in that projectile attack, it's going to start launching attacks until we actually stop this coroutine. So if you wanted to go a step further than that, you could, uh, let's actually make that a private coroutine and call it active attack and you could say set the coroutine we just started to that active attack coroutine and then maybe do something like a private void on disable and at that point in time in the script when your uh, game object or the mono behavior script make character attack is done you would stop coroutine active attack that way basically as long as this character is in the scene and uh, has started it's going to start launching attacks and when it is done in the scene or it gets disabled the script gets disabled it will stop attacking so that should be good in theory and we can go ahead and test this out inside of the game and as you can see the attack gets launched in the top left area after two seconds it fades from the scene and it will keep going until something in our script uh, actually stops it. Let's actually um, launch this one more time but not in maximize on play so that we can try disabling this script and see if it actually does stop attacking uh, which it should do because that's what we told it to do. So play and then we disable that script and it stops attacking. And now uh, it doesn't start attacking again when we have the checkbox there you would probably need to use on enable or some other part of the mono behavior events I guess uh, to re-enable the attack but that's the basics of just creating an attack there. Uh, so now we can go ahead and add in different projectiles. So now if you want the attack to be a little bit more complicated we can go ahead and add in attack modifiers one of the key parts of this system. Um, so to get things started, we'll use one I've already created for the, uh, the many, many demos inside of the package. And I do recommend you go check out some of those demos to see what's possible. And we'll just drag this into event modifiers. So this is a projectile trail. It's a scriptable object and we can see the settings if we click on that. So can the trail hurt? Uh, basically the sprites that it creates, can it do damage like a normal projectile? Um, the fade time, which is how long it, how long that trail will last before fading, and the time between trail images. Basically, how often do you want it to create a trail image behind the projectile? So because I don't actually want to use this creeping frost trail prefab as the image that kind of appears behind the game object, I'm actually going to go ahead and duplicate that. Well, you know what? Even better, I'll show you how to create a new one inside of the system. So up here in the tools menu, which is not there by default, but will be there as soon as you're using my package, you can go down to pass, create, projectile attack modifier, and find the modifier that you want to use with your projectile. 
So in this case, um, projectile trail is under on projectile update modifier, uh, kind of just defining the type of modifier it is there. So if we click on here, it's going to create a new uh, projectile modifier in your package, which by default is going to be located under plugins, projectile attack system, scriptable objects, and then you drill down to the type of projectile. So attack modifiers on projectile attack modifier, and then finally projectile trail. So we can take this modifier, add it to our attack right there, and we can go in here and edit the settings. So the only thing we're going to want to change here is the type of game object it's going to be creating. And we'll use the poison spit. Now, in uh, many cases, you're probably going to want to create your own uh, trail prefab. For instance, uh, you could create something that looks just like this, but instead in the sprite renderer, maybe you fade it out a bit. Uh, let's actually go ahead and do that because I think it'll give it a nicer effect. So to create a new prefab, I'll just drag this into the scene. I will go ahead and create a temporary prefabs folder just for this video. We'll drag a new... Um, basically the, the game object from the scene into here to create a prefab and I'll rename it trail. So because the modifier can go ahead and turn off damage it's not necessary to remove the projectile script though you certainly wouldn't need to keep it there. Um, but the only thing we're going to change here is the sprite renderer. We'll change that to a lower alpha to give it partial transparency. Okay I'll go ahead and delete the game object from the scene and we'll go back to the event modifier and we'll change the prefab that it's going to instantiate to the trail prefab. And now let's go ahead and test this out inside of the scene. So not too bad. There is a problem here in that the uh, trail prefab still has a rigid body and a collider, so it's actually colliding with these projectiles. Uh, of course, in Unity's physics or physics 2D settings, you can churn off a projectile's ability to collide with each other, but since this is a demo scene, I haven't done that. Um, so to fix that, I'll go ahead and uh, take the rigid body and the circle collider off of that prefab, and that should make it work just fine here. Okay, okay, so that, that, that's more like what we were expecting. Uh, we have a projectile launching out to the top left, and behind it is a ghosting trail of that original image, which also fades out. Maybe we would want to uh, decrease the fade time on that a little bit. But you can see how that gives you kind of a cool effect. Now, we've pretty much covered the basics of how to use the system in this video already. Uh, but one more thing I want to show you is how it's really cool when you combine multiple event modifiers on one projectile attack. So it's really easy to create uh, kind of more complicated systems by using these. So uh, I have some... Uh, acceleration modifiers already created for the demo. So here I'm just going to grab a uh, projectile acceleration demo, uh, which this modifier, obviously based off of the projectile acceleration script, will make it so that it will accelerate 100 force units in the direction it's already traveling each uh, second. So basically, in other words, it's going to speed up as it travels. So let's go ahead and push play here, and you should see it move faster as time goes on. So not only does it have a projectile trail, but it also is accelerating in the direction we want it to go. So one more very important thing I forgot to mention in the original recording was how to make a game object able to receive damage from your projectiles. Uh, so in my script, how this is done is by implementing a interface called iProjectileDamageable on whatever enemy your player script or even collidable terrain, I don't know, a wall or something, that you want it to take damage from. So we're gonna open up this brand new script called enemy test. And then in uh, Visual Studio or your editor of choice, I'm gonna make it implement I projectile damageable. So let's go ahead and open up this enemy test script. And uh, you'll see that this uh, model behavior is implementing I projectile damageable, which uh, references pasta interfaces as the namespace. And uh, the only thing this interface has in it is the apply damage method, uh, which basically means it's going to take the power that's received from that projectile after a collision and the projectile decides to apply damage. 
Uh, and you take that and you do whatever you want with it. The very standard thing to do would be to decrease the health of whatever target is taking the damage from the projectile, right? Um, so here what we're going to do is I'm going to set a public flow or int uh, health and I'll have it set to 100 by default. And as the most basic health calculation ever, health is going to minus equal power. So very simple. And let's say for the update, um, when it, or if health is less than or equal to zero, uh, destroy the game object. So when you're actually writing your scripts, probably going to be more complicated than that. Uh, but this should demonstrate it really simply. So let's go back over here. We should be able to see health 100. And uh, since we're working with the attack we had going on earlier, I should collide with this witch and the witch should take damage in theory. So one more thing I forgot to mention is that there's a script in the package called audio manager, which should be attached to a game object in your scene, probably the scene manager or the camera or something like that. Uh, and with that, whenever one of your projectiles collides or is launched, the audio sources will be created on demand for that. And uh, assuming you have that attached, you should be able to have it collide with the witch properly. So uh, let's see here, change the position of Z to zero. And uh, okay, we can see it in game. So let's go ahead and hit play and we can watch the projectile collide. Okay, so it got hit four times, took 25 damage each time, and then the enemy removed itself when it was done. So that's basically the gist of how to use the projectile attack system. I hope I've made everything clear for you guys and that you are eager to go ahead and try my system out. But if you have any questions, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. Uh, I'd be more than happy to clear things up for you guys, maybe with another video if necessary. But aside from that, thanks so much for watching. I've been Chris, and hopefully I'll see you guys in my future video content as well.